What's up, Sim Racers? This is Larry TJ or Sim here. Looking down to make sure that my background's going for y'all. Uh, keep you entertained during this review, though. But uh, I am doing my 90-day review on the AccuForce V2 Wild Dirt Rally 2.0. Is playing in the background. Actually, it's a great game. Uh, really enjoying it. But uh, I think this is where the AccuForce is really shining, uh, or helps uh, explain how good the software is for the AccuForce because. The, actually, the game doesn't have good force feedback, but the Aggie Force makes it badass. <laughs> anyway, so let's get on with, with the review. So, 90 day review. Anytime I get a product that costs a substantial amount of money, uh, at least to me, I like to do a midterm and a long term review for y'all guys because, you know, when you initially get something in, you feel real, you know, really excited about the product and stuff, and that relays over. And I think that makes a good video. Uh, but I also that's why I also like to do the the latter reviews uh, to see if that excitement's still there And I am actually happy to say that excitement is still there I'm actually more excited about my AccuForce V2 now than I was when I first got it and I thought it was pretty Dang slick looking so how it all came about was uh, I initially was gonna get in and just give you the backstory I was initially going to get into uh, the Fnatic DD2 wheel and uh, order that I ordered that in you know way in the beginning and uh, even ended up getting the voucher for the free wheel or, or uh, uh, what they, a coupon for some other product if you didn't want the free wheel because I ordered it so long because of the delay they gave these vouchers right so that that's all fine and dandy um, and, and a great deal actually but I wanted to review something uh, around Christmas time and because I was off for two weeks so uh, in, in the back of my head, I've always wanted to look at the AccuForce because to me it's a staple in the direct drive market. Uh, it's, you know, you got the OSWs and you got the Fnatic and then now you, well now you have the Fnatic coming out uh, next month. And then of course you got the Sim Experience AccuForce uh, V1 in the beginning, now it's the V2. Uh, so it's been a, it's been around the block a few times, right? And uh, it, it seems to know what it's doing really well. So I got it in, really excited about it. And you know, as y'all seen the unboxing, it looks looks badass. I mean, it's, it's like when you look at a sports car, it just looks fast sitting there, right? Let me just show you. So hopefully I'm getting this in camera here, but when you come into the sim room here, uh, you're looking at this bad boy here, you know, with all these fins and stuff on it. It just, it looks fast sitting there. And it is pretty fast, actually. Uh, so I'm really digging it, and it gets me excited. Oh, let me see. Get my camera back up here. Hopefully, I got that in picture there, and I'm of course back in picture, which it looks like I am. That's great. So I get really excited when I come into the room here to start sim racing because it looks good. It's like when you're going out to your your nice car that you like, that's clean outside, and and you're like, oh yeah, I feel good about going to work today. I'm going to something really cool. Uh, and that's what the AccuForce sends to me. And so it, when you're you're a car guy, you get what I'm saying, right? You're a motorcycle guy, you get what I'm saying. So that uh, that that's that's the feeling I get from it, which is great. So, but then when I go start it up, let's say running Dirt Rally 2.0, uh, and the the wheels just shaking, you know, from the engine RPMs, and then you feel that the the tires are going over the pavement or the rock surface and stuff and and then it stops you even feel the rpms climb through the wheel and then settle back down to the lope that's really exciting it's very engaging and uh i don't know that any other wheel does that uh but the accuforce does and i really like that it's 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 all these little little bitty pieces that come together that makes up a really great experience is, is what I like about the AccuForce. So, you know, the elephant in the room for me in the beginning with the um, comparing it to others, which, I, you know, this is my, actually my first direct drive wheel, but just off of paper specs is that it's only 13 to 16 newton meters of power. So I was in my head, you know, I'm like, well, the Fanatics were DD2s, it would be 20 up to 25. Uh, I think it's 18 to 25 uh, range, and then their DD1s are 15 to 20, right? I think 20, 15 to 20 uh, range, which actually went up one newton meter for each model since the very initial release. So, 
And then you got the OSWs that are 16 uh, uh, Newton meters, the 20, the 30. Uh, I mean, they just get an enormous amount of power. Uh, and it's really hard to figure out, like, what is enough power for you, you know? So to me, uh, you know, I'm a driver that drive off a of feel. I don't really care if I'm as fast as other people. Uh, I like to feel the immersion. And uh, so the AccuForce gives me the immersion. I get the real rubbery feeling in. Uh, with the AccuForce, so really like that. Um, but so as I went through the so software, and hopefully y'all have seen some of my software um, uh, how tos and stuff, and I'm, I'm going to bring some more to the channel as well to help people out because it's a really awesome software. But um, there isn't a game out there. And of course, we all ha we all have these games, right? We, that that we love. We have the i Racings. We have the Dirt Rally 2.0. We have uh, race room. We have Project Cars 2. We have uh, a Settle Corsa, ACC that came out, uh, Automobilista. Uh, you know all these games that you love to play, right? So there hasn't been a game out there that I have played that doesn't feel good. Uh, they all feel great, and uh, but in the beginning they just didn't quite feel perfect. Uh, but now they feel perfect right so and that's just coming in and, and learning the software and how to get the most out of the wheel now uh, you know I fire up a game and I don't have to mess with settings anymore because I already got something there I spent some time on it you know let's say I spent a month uh, getting all this stuff dialed in for all the various games right I got it in pretty dang close what I was looking for is a real rubbered in feeling when I go over a bump uh, you feel uh, when you, you go over a whole steering wheel right here. When I go over a bump, you feel that jerk, but it's not such a hard, harsh jerk. It's more like a compression of a tire. And in the very beginning, it was more like a hard jolt. And it was it was cool, but it wasn't what I would feel in a real car to me. Uh, actually, in a real car, you don't feel I don't think as much as what you feel out of a direct drive wheel. They're kind of your steering kind of floats around more in a car, I think. Uh, kind of smoother, you know, the suspension picks up most of the bumps and stuff. But when you're trying to drive fast in a sim, you're trying to relay that information to you through the wheel as much as you can. Obviously, a motion rig is going to relay it better because it's going to pull up more uh, telemetry uh, of what the car is actually doing. So you marry both of them together and it's bliss, right? and then put in VR, I mean, you'll never go back to work again, right? <laughs> so, but uh, I want a rubbery feeling for every track, and this is what I get out of it uh, with the Sim Commander 4 software. So uh, it took a little while getting dialed in, uh, a little longer, not as long as I thought it would, but uh, I mean, I was pretty pretty good at setting it up for Sim Vibe and stuff, so I had a good understanding of it. So. Um, it wasn't too bad actually for me, but to get that nice rubber end feeling, I, I've learned a lot as far as how to uh, do the oscillations, the speeding up the wheel where you need to speed it up and stuff like that. Uh, so now I get this phenomenal feeling, right? And it uh, feels great. So I can't say enough about the software. Uh, that is really what makes it shine. And, and you, you look at the video here, you can't really see, but you know, the wheel moving around a lot and stuff. Uh, actually, I think you can see some of the, you know, relays of what I'm feeling through the wheel. It's very reactive. Dirt Rally 2.0 is actually a pretty reactive game, but that's another great thing about the software is Dirt Rally 2.0 has no force feedback in their software itself. It sucks. It, all they have is, is steering alignment. Uh, so when you throw in uh, Sim Commander 4, turn on the foundation settings. You get all that because the telemetry is in the game. They did do that right, uh, but their software, their in-game force feedback doesn't relay it to you. But you turn on the, say, the uh, uh, foundation, steering foundation, and you're pulling all that telemetry out, and it, it's it's doing the job for you. Nice thing about it is when they update the software, I don't care because I have to have steering foundation. I don't have to go back. I know you Forza fans know about this. They update the software, and then you're like, oh, crap, I hate it, man. This sucks. Or you love it, right? I don't have to worry about that because I already have it set the way I want to with the foundation setup. That's that's awesome. I, uh, so, yes, you spend a little bit more work 
in the beginning. Uh, but I think when you use foundation uh, software, that's really where the money's at. You, you use foundation software, you don't have to ever set it up again. You're done. And you can set up per car and spend, you know, a thousand hours doing that if you want to, but you really don't need to spend that much time. And I think that's where people get confused and think, well, this is going to take too much time setting it up. Now, just set it up per class. Set up road cars. Set up GT. GTE, GT2, GT3 cars all as one. They all give you very similar uh, effects, right? Now, there's obviously some cars that do feel different. Like if you do like a McLaren P1, it tends to load up and then release kind of type of car, you know. Um, that one's a little bit different, but, you know, there are some of those. But, you know, you set up per class is what I recommend. So, you know, if it, most people generally tend to favor one or two classes that you drive they won't like rally they won't gt cars or they won't uh classic cars you know set up the ones that you like the most uh, and go with that and take your time with it my dog is scratching with her chain over here in the background Gemma. <laughs> oh man anyway um but set up the ones that you want and run with it and then try them out in different ones. So when I first got it, you know, I was setting up every game, just testing it out to see that it worked and yeah, it worked. And then I started spending some time dialing it in a little bit. And, you know, I think I probably spent a good month's worth dialing stuff in uh, between all these Sims and that's a lot of Sims. Now, if you only like a couple Sims, you ain't gonna spend as much time, right? ACC for one, I only got one profile for ACC because they all drive pretty much the same. I mean, yes, you feel some characteristics different from each car, uh, which is good, but, you know, a jolt's a jolt as a jolt, you know, so, uh, and uh, so, yeah, I kind of set it up the same. It's close enough. Uh, anyway, um, other than that, what else can I say about it? Let's get out the pros here. Uh, the torque is plenty, actually. Uh, and I said that in the beginning, you know, that it's not going to fit for everybody, 13 to 16 Newton meters. I thought I wanted more, and I do. Uh, I did want more at that time until I figured out the software more. And now I'm like, eh, it's enough because, you know, when I'm driving a car now, let me uh, pop this off again, these have little thumb rests on it, right? You don't want to stick your thumbs in here when you're driving because it has really caught me off guard on how fast this wheel spins uh, to where I got my thumb caught in there a few times, especially if you have gloves on, it tends to stick. Uh, that, you know, you can spring your thumb pretty good or, or maybe break it. Uh, I haven't came that close to breaking it, but I have came close to, to springing it, springing it. And uh, so anyway, it reacts really fast uh, back and forth for all this all the uh, feedback that you're getting especially like dirt rally too uh, that's a very fast re fast reaction uh, type of driving and stuff but it can also be very smooth and stuff so when you're doing like a rally cross or something like that uh, and you're just guiding it through the through the curve and stuff it feels nice and smooth and you feel that tire rolling and uh, which I've never felt on any other um, you know, belt driven wheel for that matter of all the, all of them that I ever tried, you just feel the jolts, right? This thing has power for days and it doesn't give up. So it doesn't get exhausted or anything like that. You get exhausted from driving with it, but, uh, it doesn't. So it's, it's always reacting appropriately. And it's really surprising some of the feelings you get out of it. Just like when I had motion, when I first got it, I was surprised how much I felt uh, and, and how much better of a driver it made me and I'm not that great of a driver, but I have fun So I don't care, but uh, um, Yeah, some of the subtleties like when you're going into a curve and, and it's like on dirt rally 2.0 it has these little uh, uh, Drain ditches there on the side on the paved tracks you feel your tire compress in there and then pop back out over the ridge and stuff it's really neat feeling and uh you know, it makes me wonder if the game is, is done that well, uh, but I'm using foundation and I'm able to pick those things up. So really, really cool feelings that you can get out of this thing. So anyway, I digress, let's go for some more here. Uh, if you can't tell, Sim Commander 4 software is amazing. Take your time, uh, set it up. 
don't don't skip around from car to car just pick a car that you know you like and uh because you've been doing this for a while racing sim racing stuff right and just set that one up get it dialed in what you learn from that one apply it to the other cars it's the same stuff what you learn from one car it's going to be the same thing now what you learn from one game to the next may differ so for instance project cars 2 their force feedback kind of sucks but you can kind of understand why it sucks on a direct drive wheel because their stuff was kind of really geared for belt driven wheels and so a direct drive wheel it's so uh, precise it picks up everything right well their game don't relay everything so it feels very muted uh, but it picks up the big jolts really hard and uh, it, it, with a what say a belt driven wheel and I think it's uh, kind of adds extra extra oomph with the belt driven wheels to to make them feel powerful where it was drag drive wheel it's like eh, that's okay <laughs> so uh, the AccuForce is probably the the only game that's weak with AccuForce would be Project Cars 2 and I think that game is just that it's only as good as the software uh, even though I, I run foundation with it I can get an excellent feel I can get the rubber the road feel that I'm looking for all the time I get that right I just don't get as much power to me as I as I may want with that game or as I get in other games you really don't know you want it until you experience another game. You're like, hey, man, that game sucks. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, it is what it is. I think the only thing that would make it better would say Project Cars 2, which has a very weak force feedback settings uh, for a direct drive wheel, is more power. You gotta have more power for it, uh, I believe. Uh, but that's the only game. All the rest of them, they got plenty of power. Uh, so, which was kind of a little. Uh, 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 I wasn't thinking that I would come to that conclusion eventually that uh, it is actually powerful enough. I wouldn't want less power than what this thing puts out, 13 to 16 newton meters. I wouldn't want less than that. I, I think that's the bare minimum because uh, I, I don't think I would have as much fun. I don't think it would feel as reactive if, if it had less power than it does now. So uh, I think that's a, a really good base. And, you know, obviously if you have more power, that's great too, um, but if you don't have the finesse or the fidelity or you can't get the um, the realism uh, with having more power, then I wouldn't want the more power. I don't want it just to rip my arms off or, or sprain my wrist trying to drive it. I want to feel that it was actually needed. And unless you're driving, say, an old historic car that has no power steering, uh, you don't really need that extra power. Today, cars have power steering. so. <laughs> Uh, it, you don't really need that much more power. Uh, so, you know, 13 to 16 is great. Works good. Uh, I like it. So, let's digress some more. Uh, I get the nice connected road feeling. Oh, the RPM thing. I don't remember if I explained that in the beginning, but say Dirt Rally 2.0 has a really cool feeling with the RPM gauge, and you can dial it up and down the way you want it to, but uh, when, when you the car starts up, you feel the wheel going over the crevices and the gravel and stuff. You feel the RPM, of course, climb through the vibration of the wheel. It doesn't have motors in the rim, right? It's just through the motor itself, right? So it's it's vibrating enough to relay engine vibes to you as it increases and then settles back down. And then as well as going over the crevices. It's really remarkable that it, it does all that. Uh, but it's really neat because you're sitting there and your and your wrist is just bobbing up and down from say like some of the historic cars because they have such a hard lope and you're like this is pretty freaking cool man so uh, I really like that feature uh, I'm, I don't know if other other uh, direct drives have that feature or not but man it, it's a it's a really cool feature uh, and once you understand the software I know a lot of people turn off the engine vibration because they think it hampers their their uh, feelings and stuff that they're getting but uh, once you learn how to do it, you can turn that little puppy up, and uh, it, and it doesn't affect your uh, oscillations and stuff like that, you know. So, uh, really neat feature. I like that a lot. Uh, mods, love the mods. I mean, you can do anything with with uh, Fnatic. So this is my McLaren Fnatic GT3 wheel. I've got the uh, BNG on there, quick release. I've got the uh, uh, 
uh, board in there to to listen to. Uh, well, actually, basically, basically, it turns this into a USB, is what it is. So I already did the review on that one as well. But uh, SRM, I think it is. So you could get, say, Fanatic wheel that you like, and then convert it over to work for for the um, AccuForce. The neat thing is, is once you go AccuForce, and let's say you want to try out other ones, because you know, let's face it, we like to try. You don't own one car for your whole life, right? You're going to want to try out different cars uh, through your lifespans. So it, it's going to be fair to say that I'm probably going to try out different direct drive wheels to get a different experience and see what those are. Uh, so once you're in, say, AccuForce, to transition to, let's say, you want to try a 30 newton meter OSW, like an augury or whatever, no big deal. You're not going to waste any money because all your wheels will work for those as well. So. <laughs> Obviously, your button box wouldn't work uh, for that, but any wheel conversion, any rim that you have will work for those uh, OSWs as well. And you can connect it any any way that you want, right? Whatever your favorite connection is. I like the B&G connectors. They're very positive and, and, and positive feeling. That's another great point about the AccuForce is, is the connections, when you pull it off, you know, you have this spring load, right? It's connect, there's no turning, there's no grabbing a set screw. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Uh, none of that, right? You just click it on and you're done. And, and that's it. So uh, you do have to actually hold the uh, spindle there and to you hear it click like right there. Uh, but that's it. There's no tightening the screw. There's no, there's no nothing. It's just feels like a real race car when you get in and do it. So really love that pro as well. Um, all right. Let's get on to a couple cons, okay? So there is, you know, after 90 days, you know, if you have a, if you have something that's wrong with with, with a product, it tends to get amplified over time because you get tired of that part of it, right? And uh, it hasn't really bothered me that much, but it is still there as a con. The controller box, um, it it's just loud. The fans loud in it, and I don't care for that. Uh, I would hope it had some silent fans if they ever come out with a newer version. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty loud. Uh, so I turn it off during doing these reviews and stuff or, or you know, these talk sessions with you if I can, if I'm not using the wheel at the time. Uh, obviously, I have to have it on if I am using the wheel, but I turn it off because uh, it's loud. And then also the wheel itself is, uh, and now I have it within two feet of me, so I can hear it. You know, you could obviously put it further away from you. Uh, on the other side of your computer or something and you probably wouldn't hear it uh, as further you get away from you so that's that's a good good thing to think about as well but um, the motor wine uh, in the box itself as far as the the motor the AccuForce V2 motor itself it has a little bit of a whine to it uh, it's because it's so sensitive so you can just barely touch the top of the rim or just tap it and it'll it'll kick on you'll hear it a little a little whine to it and that's a little annoying uh, it does go away after like 10 seconds say that you haven't touched the wheel but being that it's so sensitive it actually you know whines anytime that you touch it because it feels an input uh, really neat how sensitive this thing is but that's the only other thing that's a little bit of annoying now when you have headsets on playing like all of us do if you're a sim racer you either have the the, the loud system turned up or you have headsets with them turned up so those are non-issues really but it is a little uh niggling issue that that i don't care for about the product uh but i can certainly live with it because everything else is is amazing about this product so uh that is it so you know that's my honest thoughts on this direct drive wheel you know just to really express some of the things that i love about this this setup you know you got the mods for one uh, you can mod it for days, so you can do your different rims that you want, different button boxes that you want, conversion of button boxes, whatever. Uh, you, you think of it, you can add it. You're not tied into a certain ecosystem with the Sim Experience. You're obviously tied into Sim Experience wheel uh, base, but as far as your accessories go, button boxes, Bluetooth, whatever. Uh, you can get on, with, get on with your day knowing that uh, you can buy other things and still transfer them over 
to other products that don't have such a stringent ecosystem. So uh, I really like that aspect about, about the AccuForce because uh, I think it's a great transition. If you want to go AccuForce to say like OSW or back and forth, whatever, you got it. Um, you know, the feeling that you get with a Sim Commander 4 software is to, to me, from what I've read on forums, is still kind of unmatched. Now, I know there's some OSW people out there that I've had comments saying, oh, Sim Commander 4 is, is not as good. I don't know. I haven't used used it. But to me, as long as I can get the feeling I want, I can get the rubbery feeling that I want, compression feeling of tires like on R Factor 2, uh, when you're skipping across the track because your tires are sliding, you feel that through the wheel, it just makes you a better driver and, it, and it's more immersive that way. So, um, yeah, I, you know, as long as I can get that dialed in, I'm happy. Uh, the only thing that anybody else could bring to the table at that point would be more power. But then again, I don't want too much more power, you know. Uh, when my car's sliding and I'm feeling my tire roll from like the rim, right, and, and you're playing with that, you don't want it so much to where it's, it's jerking out of your hand, right, because that's not realistic. Uh, so there's a fine line to have, you know. You, you got to have enough power to relay that information, but not too much power to where it... it uh, breaks your wrist trying to relay that information to you, you know to where it becomes unrealistic with that so hopefully that makes sense to you but yeah it's just another great thing about it uh you know that side deflection of the tire carcass basically you really get that in in the car uh g-force effect when trying to turn the car while it, while it's resisting your inputs that's all in there as well i play with the g-force effect it's really cool uh all in all you know Going forward with the with the channel and, and thinking about what I've learned with the AccuForce V2 is that I really don't need another wheel. I'm for once content with what I have. Uh, so yes, I have some um, uh, uh, curiosities that I may want to try other wheels and stuff uh, down the road, but I'm not really in a hurry to. I'm, I'm not in a hurry to try out the uh, DD2 or DD1 Fanatic. Uh, the OSW variations that are out there, I'm not in a hurry for it because I'm really content with what I have because I have the software dialed in and it took me about a month to get it dialed in to being what I would say kind of perfect. And it really what it is is that it takes you that time to figure it out. Uh, now when I get a new game or I get a new car, it's two minutes. I'm done. I got something I want or I like. It doesn't take any time because I've already learned. Uh, I already went through that training period right so once you go through that training period of teaching yourself uh, setting up new cars to new sims is, is really no big deal you're not gonna spend that much time it's just that initial training period right uh, so yeah I'm not really I'm curious about the other other products as well I, I'm gonna uh, I, I've been trying to get other ones into the channel to review for y'all so I can give a good comparison uh, with the AccuForce but uh, yeah I mean if <laughs> If it doesn't come to me for review, I'm not looking at spending my hard-earned money on it uh, to do it. So, uh, so yeah, because I'm, I'm just content, content with the AccuForce V2. And I didn't think in the beginning I was going to be content with it. Because, you know, I, generally bigger is better, right? And uh, But in this case, the finesse is is, uh, is, is so good that I don't really care that if I, I, I can have something break my wrist, right? Uh, this is pretty damn powerful to where it... it gets really violent at, at times uh, depending on your driving situation and stuff and, and really remarkable about some of the things that you feel in the wheel as far as like you coming off a jump and feeling that tire compress and then it wiggles back in and then when you got the motion you're back in of your cars you know uh, grabbing traction and, and slide it's just, it all comes together really well so it's a good symphony between direct drive wheel and motion so I, I'm really content with everything that I have but Anyway, that's my 90 day, my three month review of the AccuForce V2 Pro. I hope that it's uh, enlightened you, gave you a little bit uh, perspective of the AccuForce. I think it really deserves more uh, YouTube presence uh, than, than just the initial review of, of, yeah, this is good and that's bad. Uh, I, th I think it deserves a little bit more presence as far as uh, people explaining how to be, uh, do software. Uh, 
adjust the software correctly and stuff. Yeah, you do have it on the forums and stuff, but I don't have time to read through thousands of posts in different forums, say like your race room and your Riza and your your uh, set of Corsa. I don't have that time, right? So I just go out and experiment with it and get it the way I like it because really, if I'm reading someone else's opinion, that's the opinion that they like. And, and I've downloaded a lot of software from uh, Sim Commander 4 and I'm like, what's wrong with these people? This is, they don't even feel good at all, but I'm sure it feels great for them, right? Uh, but for me, it doesn't. So we're all different and uh, we all want a different feel. So really, I urge you, if you get in the wheel, uh, to take your time, pick one Sim, dial in a car that you like, what you've learned from that, and then start applying it to all your rest of your cars, and you're gonna have a lot better experience uh, that way down the road, and you're gonna learn a lot faster that way. So, uh, yeah, great product, love it. Uh, highly recommended after after 90 days. So, yeah, that's it. See you next time. I'm out.